Tonight, this free crash course is being brought to you by LW Educational Services, where we are the key to unlock your destiny. Um, and so tonight we are going to cover federal requirements. We're gonna talk a little bit about math and just kind of how to answer those questions. Um, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Um, and make sure you ring the bell for notifications, okay? We're going to get straight into it. We are not going to linger around. And let's talk a little bit about federal requirements for non-hazardous and pharmaceutical substance. Oh, but before I do that, I do want to make mention to you that you will notice that here lately, my videos have been um, or will be pretty much in line with what's on the PTCB blueprint, okay? So the PTCB blueprint, the second section is the federal requirements, which is what we're going to talk about tonight. And so if you do not have that PTCB blueprint, I advise you to go to ptcb.com or sorry, ptcb.org and download the blueprint. It is a PDF form and you can print this out, okay? Um, as soon as you look at that blueprint, you will notice that under federal requirements, the very first thing that they talk about is non-hazardous, hazardous and pharmaceutical substance, okay? Non-hazardous is OTC right? Hazardous is going to be considered um, chemotherapy. And I'm just throwing out examples, okay? And handling and disposal of non-hazardous substance. So there's something called the Safe Water Drinking Act, okay? The Safe Water Drinking Act requires safe disposal of medication, okay? Um, and when these medications are being disposed of, they need to make sure that they are in line and complying with OSHA, EPA and DOT regulations, okay? If you don't have paper and pen, you may want to get some because I'm telling you, I'm spilling the tea. I'm telling you everything you need to know um, in order to make sure that you are successful because I want you to pass this test. So um, let me let me talk, let's talk a little bit about like different things that you may have seen on TV. So I know that I've watched television before and I've seen it where a person may be, you know, strung out on drugs or something like that. Maybe they're addicted very, you know, very badly. And um, they, someone walks in on them getting ready to maybe take a lot of pills or, you know, maybe use cocaine. Um, and normally you'll see them when they take the, the substance from them, you'll see them flush it down the toilet. Yeah, I know you've seen that on TV. I've seen it. And so um, here in pharmacy, in the real world, we shouldn't be flushing medication down the toilet. We should actually be making sure that medicine, um, non-hazardous substance are being disposed of correctly. Because remember, anything that goes down our toilet ultimately goes back into our water system. And we use that water to brush our teeth, to take baths, to wash our clothes, and to cook with, okay? Remember, these companies need to be um, in compliance with OSHA, Environmental Protection Agency and DOT regulations, okay? If you do not know exactly what those acronyms stand for, go ahead and write them down so that way you can look at them a little later, okay? Um, so let's talk a little bit about refill control substance prescriptions. Refill control substance prescriptions. And that's actually 2.2 on the blueprint, second, second, second little line there, okay? Um, refill. So, you know, if you're in my 15-week course, you know, or in my refresher course, you know that refills for schedules two through five, I'm sorry, for schedules three through five may be permitted. How many refills? Six, five refills within a six-month period, right? Let's back up again because I kind of stumbled a little bit. I don't know what it is, and I know this stuff. So, <laughs> Um, if you are in my refresher course, in, in my 15-week online course, you know that scheduled drugs three through five are allowed five refills within a six-month period, okay? Now, let's talk about that a little bit. That means five refills within a six-month period means that whichever comes first. So if it's five refills that are being used first before the six months, then they're done. Um, let's say a person comes in in January, January 1, we'll keep it easy, um, to give a prescription for Xanax, right? Doctor writes it for five refills. They don't get the next refill until uh, July 31st. 
They go to the pharmacy and they say, hey, I want to get my refill for Xanax. The pharmacist or the tech says, oh, your, your prescription has expired. The customer says, what? What do you mean my prescription has expired? I'm looking at my bottle right here. I have five refills. I want the refill. Yes, ma'am, you, you may have five refills, but your prescription expired and you know, you've missed the six month mark. July is the seventh month of the year and January is the first month of the year. And so the prescription was good until the end of July. Um, so I'm sorry, until the end of June, uh, June 30th. So ma'am, you're going to need to go back to your doctor and get another script in order for us to fill this. Oh my God, I cannot believe. Yep, we totally understand. We apologize for that, but that's just the rules. And so we are here to enforce them, okay? Okay, um, transfer of controlled substance. Transfer of controlled substance. So you will notice PTCB blueprint, second line, you'll see transfer there, okay? You need to know these things. Let's talk a little bit about transfer of controlled substance. So schedule three through five drugs may be transferred on a one-time basis on a one-time basis. And you won't see Schedule II drugs being transferred because remember, anything that is transferred, it has refills. And since Schedule II drugs cannot have refills, you won't see any type of uh, transfers or anything like that there, okay? Uh, DEA Form 106 is gonna be good to use for a loss or theft of controlled substance, okay? You're gonna notice that that is on line three of the PTCB blueprint underneath federal requirements, okay? Um, one form must be retained um, at the pharmacy and then another form is gonna go out, okay, to uh, the DEA, but definitely they will come in and take, you know, uh, pictures and do different things like that to create that little investigation. Risk evaluation and mitigation strategies. Please listen up to this because I will tell you that this is something new that is on the exam this year. And so if you have not seen this before, you want to pay attention to this, okay? Risk evaluation and mitigation strategies, also known as REMS. This is pretty much a program that monitors the risk that comes with certain medications. So obviously they have medication guides, which is a paper handout that comes with many prescription medications. In that medication guide, it may be information showing them, you know, the drug interactions that this particular medication may have. It may show them disease interactions. It may show them possible side effects, that sort of thing. Um, and just really tries to outline any risk that comes with that medication because they're trying to be proactive to make sure that when these patients are taking these drugs, that they are aware um, and to one of the things too that I think about when I think about risk evaluation in mitigation strategies is though, you know, you have some drugs that have a lot of risk, we want the benefits to outweigh the risk. We don't want the risk to outweigh the benefit, right? So I always think about chemotherapy whenever, you know, I'm talking about this subject because chemotherapy has been known to have a very big risk. You know, it might kill the bad blood cells, but it also kills the, the good ones as well. And so that's one of the drugs you can think about there. Um, it also talks about a communication plan, you know, how to educate and inform and raise awareness of risk, right? So that way the patient is aware of the possibilities that could actually happen. Um, if you haven't read about eye pledge or the thylomide, take a take an opportunity to read a little bit about that because this is almost, you know, something that, that leans towards that category. Um, patient package inserts, okay? Patient package inserts typically come with birth control. Um, and so whenever a patient package insert is attached to a medication, that PPI should go with that patient. In the pharmacy, I've seen a lot of people take the patient package insert, throw it in the trash, slap a label on the, on the bottle, and send it out to the, to the patient. No, it is supposed to go. They are entitled to having that patient package insert so that way they are familiar with everything you know and all of the information that that particular manufacturer wants them to know about that medication so make sure that if you are in the pharmacy right now that you are not um 
having those little issues where you're, you know, destroying the PPI and you're just giving them the bottle. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of calculations. Now, bear with me because I hope this works. So, um, calculations. I will say that so many of my friends think that math is a bully. And I will be honest another way and you are still here standing so many people have come and gone so many people you know are laid up maybe in the hospital maybe some people didn't make it but you're still here friend and you're still here for a reason trust your success trust your journey love on yourself be kind to yourself you only get one self you only get one life to live okay so live every day as if it was your last